Hey guys, it's Story. Welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new here. This is my channel, Storybook, and I talk about books and streaming, usually, but today we are talking about the Enneagram. I mean, we're still talking about books in this video, obviously. We are doing some booktuber versus their Enneagram trials. <laughs> I guess I still don't know what to call this. Basically what we're doing here, if you haven't seen the videos before this, is an Enneagram mini-series here on my channel where I first gave a ton of book recommendations based Based on the Enneagram types. There are 12 recs per type, so I will put those videos in the description below or in a card up here somewhere. You can get your recs there, of course, but also within these three videos, you not only will get those same recs, but you will see your own Enneagram type go through the recs and tell you which ones they liked, which ones they didn't like, so you can get an authentic recommendation for your type. And not only that, but they will be trying one of those book recs and we will see what they think about it. I'm so, so, so excited to do this. Thank you to everyone who participated. I love all of these YouTubers. They all have really great channels. I will leave their channels in the description down below for the video that they were in. And also I'll leave the Enneagram Institute's website down below. That's where I get all my information about the types. If you wanna look into it, figure out what your type is. There's a quiz on there, but I would not recommend taking the quiz you should always type yourself once you read your type you know <laughs> like when I discovered my type I felt like someone finally understood me and my mind and my thought process my actions it's it's really weird you just put yourself in this group you'll probably be like me and become obsessed with the Enneagram <laughs> also in this video we tried out Enneagram coffee which is a coffee brand that has different roasts based on your type. So I'll leave their website down below. They kindly gave me a discount code that I will leave down below. As well, I tried the type threes coffee in the last video because I am a type three. And then we tried the type five coffee in this video. Also, there are a ton of sources where I got all these book recs from. I watched every <laughs> YouTube video there is for book recommendations around the Enneagram. And also I read a bunch of articles. And so I compiled those all together, made my recs, and then sent all of that to these YouTubers. But without taking up too much time, let's go ahead and get into the different Enneagram groups or the centers, the triads, whatever you want to call them. That is how I have organized these videos. Organization is everything to me. Three is where you at. Of course, if you haven't seen the first video to this three-part series, you might want to check out that one first because we went over types two, three, and four. I am featured in that one, of course, because I am a type three. You don't necessarily need to watch the intro videos where I go over all the book recs. I'm basically just explaining why they are good recs for your type, some different book and movie characters that are like your type if you want to compare yourself to them, I guess, to see what your type is. But if you want to watch this video first that's totally okay I will have it linked above as well in the description at the video that came before this one and then at the end of this video I will have the third video part three which is for types eight nine and one <laughs> a lot of explaining but let's just go ahead and transition into even more <laughs> explaining so the Enneagram types are separated in three different groups this will really help you out if you don't know your type it's a good place to start so once you know that you only have three types to figure out instead of looking at all nine types. Next is the head triad, better known as the thinking center, and their strengths and liabilities are surrounding fear. Their personalities are based on their internal thoughts. These types focus on the theme of inner guidance and support. This translates to issues around anxiety and insecurity for them. And like the other triads, each of these three types will have a slightly different strategy to handle those issues. The thinking types are also known as the fear triad. They have more difficulty compared to the other types with making decisions and making plans for their future. The head types tend to focus on some unique aspect of worst case scenario thinking, which in turn can develop their creativity. This is how I know I'm a type three and not a type seven like so many people mistake me to be because I am always in the future like I don't really think about the past or the present I'm always in the future and the fact that a type 7 cannot think in the future they kind of put it off just shows that I'm not a 7. <laughs> so stop saying I'm a 7. So now that it took me forever to explain that let's go ahead and get started with the videos starting with the type 5. Why are you always so suspicious? Shall I answer chronologically or alphabetically? Looks like some serious studying. I just got this fascination with snowy owls, so I thought I'd do a little bit of reading about it. Are those stacks of owl books? Yeah, everything the library had. 
Hi, I'm Haley from Pages of Haley, and I am doing the booktubers versus Enneagram types. Here I am, so I'm supposed to wear green, so that's why I'm wearing green, because I am type five, which is the head, and I guess I'm like a thinker. I am the investigator. I'm looking at the site, and it says the intense cerebral type perceptive, innovative, secretive, and isolated. Fives are alert, insightful, and curious. They are able to concentrate and focus on developing complex ideas and skills. Independent, innovative, and inventive, they can also become preoccupied with their thoughts and imaginary constructs. They become detached, yet high, strong, and intense. At their best, visionary pioneers, often ahead of their time and able to see the world in an entirely new way. And the investigator, that makes a lot of sense. So like someone who's very thoughtful and um, thinks, <coughs> I'm so dumb. How am I a type 5? I'm dumb. <laughs> the overview of type 5 says, We have named personality type 5 the investigator because more than any other type, fives want to find out why things are the way that they are. They want to understand how the world works. They're always searching, asking questions, and delving into things in depth. They do not accept received opinions and doctrines. Feeling a strong need to test the truth of most assumptions for themselves. That makes a lot of sense. I am an overthinker, so I mean... Here I am, type five, Enneagram, makes sense. I'm literally in my head all the time. It's kind of exhausting to be me. I already filmed the clip of me reacting to the book Rex for type five. Vicious, I actually really wanna read that book. I've heard it's really, really good. The Secret History. I hear a lot of good things about that book as well, but I am too scared to read it because it seems very big and dense and honestly it doesn't seem like my type of book, I'm not gonna lie. It does seem like a pretty good wreck for a type five though. The fifth season, I loved. It's honestly a genius book. I think N.K. Jemisin is a mastermind <laughs> and I really enjoyed that book. I read it last year. It was so creative and just so well done. I really love that book. Oh, if we were villains. Now, book Twitter cannot shut up about this book, but the funny thing is, I started it, I literally read as far as the first page and then I returned it to the library because I was like, this is not gonna work for me. I don't think Dark Academia is for me, like I truly don't. I actually think this is really interesting because like type five is the investigator, so Jack the Ripper, I believe is like, the main character is trying to solve a mystery, so that's perfect. I mean, these are probably all mysteries, now I'm thinking about it, and the fifth season. <laughs> That was a perfect one for the type five. Picked two thrillers. Oh. So the first one is the guest list. Wait. I was just thinking about reading this book. Actually, someone told me I shouldn't read it because it wasn't good. But I've really been into thrillers recently. So I... I'm really excited that I've been recommended thriller. The first one is The Guest List. So the next book is True Story. I've never heard of this one. I'm probably going to read The Guest List because I've heard so many things about it. So I ended up reading The Guest List by Lucy Foley and I gave that book one star. Here's why. <laughs> Why do I think this book was recommended for a type 5? Because this is a mystery slash thriller and you know usually these types of books involve a lot of problem solving and thinking because you're trying to figure out what happened, how these characters got to where they are now, or what's gonna happen at the end. Like you're trying to uncover these mysteries and these details. So I understand the investigator that goes hand in hand with the mystery, right? So I completely understand why this book was recommended for a type 5. But like I just didn't like this book like I like a lot of thrillers and mysteries I also just love analyzing everything and so but, but with this book it's like I just couldn't get invested and I was so bored the whole time I didn't want to think about anything like I was just going through the book just I don't care the book is just about these people at a wedding they all kind of have these underlying hostility towards each other like they're not all really close friends they're all just there for like the bride and groom but they all kind of know each other like a little bit and there's some like drama in the past that gets uncovered and a few important mysterious details that it that get uncovered and the hostility kind of explodes and some really really bad stuff goes down murder the mystery isn't just who kills someone but it also is who dies and also why what was the motive i just really didn't care about any of the characters i couldn't get invested and i mean i think it's just a personal problem this book reminded me a lot of one of the worst books i've ever read and that is we were liars so i think i was a bit biased when i was reading this because something about rich white people complaining while they're throwing a very expensive celebration and just being rich it's always gonna remind me of we were liars and i didn't like the vibe of this book <laughs> i just i just couldn't connect with any of the characters so i understand why this book was recommended for a type 5 because it's a mystery and you know of course type 5s are very thoughtful and like to investigate and analyze things so i understand that but for me because i couldn't get invested i just didn't feel like can't like i didn't care enough to investigate <laughs> so i think that this book 
is good for type fives i guess but i also kind of feel like the reveals and plot twists weren't done very well and like there kind of wasn't enough time for the reader to even have their own thoughts because things kind of went by too fast yes recommend mysteries and thrillers for type fives but i don't know maybe not this book because it's a bit fast like i feel like maybe you could do something else that's a bit more complex and has like way more layers so like ultimately i don't think it's a bad wreck for type fives because i'm sure there are some type fives out there that would love this and would love to pull this apart because they're are quite a few layers with the characters for me personally as a reader i like to pick apart the different layers regarding the actual mystery and plot and so like not just with characters and their backstories and that's what this book was giving me and i wanted more stuff with the actual plot and this book was not giving me that so that's the main issue so i gave it one star just because i just didn't care about anything that was happening in this book and i was bored i don't think it's a bad wreck for type fives i actually think it's a pretty good wreck i think that there are definitely stronger thrillers out there i don't know if it would identify more with the other types i don't know the other types very well <laughs> yeah so that's pretty much it those are all my thoughts this is an interesting video because i was really excited for this thriller and then i just wasn't thrilled now i know more about my type and the investigator so that's exciting but anyway yeah so that's it thank you for watching and i hope you enjoy the rest of the video right now i'm trying <laughs> the type 5 coffee because because i'm a type 5 person <laughs> And apparently, that means I'm better than you. <laughs> it's the Trailblazers like it me, Kanye West. It tastes taste. really good. It tastes like greatness. Like if you could put greatness into a good coffee, it tastes well. It's bold. Super bold. If you're not a type 5, you might not like it because you're probably not as good as us. Oh, that's hot. <laughs> I just tried it for the first time too and it tastes really bold. That's what I would say. It's really sweet. I tried not to put very much creamer in it to see what it actually tastes like, but it's very... My eyes are gone. It's very sweet, isn't it? It's sweet and bold and delicious and due to the current state of the coffee beans... Okay, we're, we're done. <laughs> I'd rather die than to stay away from you. I volunteer as tribute! Did you just read the end of the book? It, it started to get stressful, so I just skipped to the end to see if everything turns out okay. It does. That defeats the point of reading the book. No, it doesn't. Now I can safely read the rest of the story knowing that Katniss and Peeta make it out alive. Hello everyone, it's Mafalda from the channel Mafalda is Reading, and I am here to represent type 6 personalities. Type 6s are called the loyalists and like the name says, we are very loyal, we expect people to be very loyal to us in relationships and also another characteristic is that we are very paranoid and anxiety filled and just suspicious of everyone. I'm here to find a book that is recommended for my type and Story was kind enough to make a list of a bunch of lists of recommendations for all of the types and I do have some good options here. So first of all, out of all of these lists, the only recommendation that I have already read is Monday's Not Coming by Tiffany D. Jackson. I enjoyed that book. I gave it, I think, either 3.5 or 4 stars. It's not my favorite Tiffany D. Jackson by any means, but it's a good book. So yeah, that was a good recommendation for me at least. I have a lot of options and the recommendations that I'm most inclined to, first of all, are Eliza and Her Monsters by Francesca Zappi because I already have that book on my TBR, not on my physical TBR, but it's on my to read list. And yeah, I do agree with that recommendation because the book, I don't really know the plot, but it focuses a lot on mental health and anxiety. And that is something that is very like we type sixes are very prone to have anxiety. Female of the Species by Mindy McGuinness and I have also been eyeing that book a lot because I think it also talks about mental health. I'm not sure. Let me see. Oh no, it's about survivors of sexual assault. I think that's the main focus of the book. So I'm interested. I love hard-hitting YA contemporaries. That is my favorite thing to read. Both of these are that genre so i don't know which one i'm gonna go for to be honest hmm i think i'm gonna go with eliza and her monsters because i don't know how i haven't read that book 
up until now. I, don't, I really don't. Also, I haven't read a lot of mental health related books and that seems like a good option. And also I have the audiobook saved. I think I'm gonna still buy a copy for myself, but having the audiobook is always a good option. So I think I'm gonna buy the book now and I'll see you guys when I have the book, when I have some thoughts. I am currently more than halfway. I'm probably going to finish this one soon. And I don't think in my last clip I explained what this book is about. Eliza, she's a senior in high school and she has created a web comic, I guess, um, online and it is called Monstrous Sea. It is super famous but no one really knows that she's the author of Monstrous Sea. And then a new guy appears at her school and Eliza finds out that that guy named Wallace is one of the biggest fanfiction writers for her webcomic Monstrous Sea. And they bond over Monstrous Sea but Wallace doesn't really know that Eliza is the creator. And until now, I'm really enjoying it. This is the type of YA contemporary that I really like to read about. And also something that I didn't really know about this book is that it has some illustrations all throughout the book from like the actual webcomic, kind of like mixed media. I've definitely heard mostly good things about this book, but I've definitely seen some critiques online. So I'm excited and intrigued to see where the story goes. Yeah, now I'm going to read a little bit and then I'll give you my final thoughts and if this is a good book for a type 6 like myself. I have finished reading Eliza and Her Monsters by Francesca Zappia and my final rating is either 3.75 or 4 star which means that I enjoyed my read and my overall thoughts were that I connected a lot with the whole fandom internet aspect of the book. In my high school years, I was kind of like Eliza. I didn't have like a very famous graphic novel like she did, but I had a Tumblr page that was fairly doing good and I spent a lot of my time there. I made a lot of friends there, so I connected so much to that part of the story and I think it's what made me like the book even more because a lot of the things that Eliza was experiencing I just I don't know I had a lot of flashbacks to my own life and my own experience in high school so that was great but at the same time this is a book about mental health in short and it's something that I struggle with a lot with books that have mental health at their core because I just feel like older people writing about mental health in teens is very hard for someone who ha who was a teen a few years ago it's just just not the same way as adults see mental health. And it's not that it's a harmful representation, it's just like not the most accurate. So that was kind of like, it wasn't totally off, but there were some things that I was like, hmm, this could have been done better. I connected a lot with the story, but with the main character of Eliza, I didn't really like her and I didn't really connect with her. But overall, I really enjoyed the story. I give it almost a four star. The ending was okay, the relationship was pretty cute, and yeah, overall, it was a good pick. And now, if this is a good book for type sixes, well, I'm a type six and I enjoyed the book, so... Maybe I gotta say yes, but at the same time, I don't know, maybe if you're struggling with anxiety and all of that, you can definitely feel some comfort with this book and what Eliza goes through. Also, at the same time, maybe I would categorize Eliza as a type 6. So yeah, I guess maybe this is a good recommendation for type 6s. So if you're a type 6, consider reading this book because you may relate to a lot of stuff like I did. So yeah, that was my experience. It was a good one, so I'm happy. <laughs> I can't tell you how much leftover guacamole I have ended up eating over the years. You ready to go to the beach? Yeah, I just need to pick out my book. It just kind of depends on my mood, you know? Let's see, I'll do this one if I'm feeling adventurous, this one if I'm feeling Orwellian, ooh, this one if I wanna start working on my podcast, this one if I'm feeling kind of literary and smart. Hello everyone, my name is Noelle and I am your resident Enneagram type seven. My channel is Noelle Seven Pages and the seven is my Enneagram type. <laughs> I am the typical seven in almost every way, except for one very specific way. Your typical seven will have lots of hobbies. They just wanna have fun in everything they do. They're always cracking jokes. Like I, 
<laughs> I'm not saying that I'm the funniest person I know, but I'm the person that makes the most jokes, even if they're horrible jokes. <laughs> I love to laugh. I love to have fun. I have 10,000 hobbies. I have different projects going on all over the place. I love to try new things. I love to go on adventures. I love being spontaneous, but it also means that I can be really scattered. I like to start projects. I don't always finish those projects. Um, <laughs> when I'm telling a story, I will go off on a bunny trail all the time. It's just, um, it's a good time. However, a lot of sevens are portrayed as being really extroverted, really outgoing. And that is very far from the truth. Like right now is one thing because I'm just talking to my camera alone in my bedroom. But in reality, I'm, I'm really shy and quiet, which is not something that I see a lot of sevens like portrayed as. <laughs> yes, I love to have fun. I love to go on adventures when I'm really comfortable with people. Anyways, that's my soapbox about how not all sevens are extroverts, but I do like to have fun. And so I'm excited. I literally jumped for joy when Story asked if I wanted to do this. I'm stoked to represent the sevens and I'm excited to see what recommendations maybe are out there because I have no idea. I haven't looked at like any of the links or anything that Story has sent me. So I wanted to do that to get my real reactions with you guys. Hey, uh, it's actually like a whole different day, but I forgot to do this part because details are not my strong suit. So here we are. <laughs> of this list, I haven't read a lot of these. I have read and love Untamed by Glennon Doyle, which is the only nonfiction on here, which was another one of those books that made me feel called out at times, but in the best possible way. Like it felt like a really big hug. I haven't read a lot of the other ones on this list because I don't really read romance and a lot of these are romance. I am currently, as I speak to you in this moment, I'm in the middle of Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and it slaps, dude. Like that is an excellent type seven rec, not just because seven is in the title. I definitely feel seen in that book in a lot of ways so far. All of the romances, I don't know. So just me like speaking in general, I read mostly fantasy sci-fi nonfiction and not so much romance and contemporary, which is what a lot of this is. And that's fine. I, I get the assumption. I get the logic. It's just that that's not particularly things that I would be reaching for. So I'm gonna turn on my screen recording so you guys can see like what I'm looking at and then we will see what the recommendations are for sevens. Ooh, I'm already seeing so many books that I love. What are they gonna give to sevens? Beach read. Okay, okay. Beach read is a definite option because I actually already have the audiobook in Libby right now and it's the second time it's come through my Libby and I just request too many audiobooks because I just want to read them all, not realizing that I only have enough bandwidth and time in the day for certain ones. It's just like an occupational hazard of, of being a seven, honestly. And I know that Beach Read is about two authors that write different genres and they're both dealing with writer's block, so they like trade genres. Get a Life Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. Another romance? What's the assumption there? Is it that because I'm like super fun loving that I would probably like romance? I mean, I get the logic. I There has been no sci-fi or fantasy at all yet. So th this is really interesting to me. Like I'm learning about <laughs> what people think of when they think of sevens and it's it's not what I thought that people think of. Why? I want to know why. Like she literally said that sevens seek escapism, which is what fantasy and sci-fi is. So I'm just, I'm, I'm really surprised. I'm very surprised. Would a type seven even want to read a book for starters? Because I'm like, a type seven would always want to be on the go. So I was like, I'm going in. And so the book that I have picked is The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. Another romance. Well, now it's just a meme. I'm gonna have an identity crisis. So apparently a romance is the way to go for sevens like me. And I am not so sure about that. So I think I am gonna pick Beach Read just because I already have it on audio. So that makes it nice and easy, but I feel like it's the best choice for me personally of all of these romances. So uh, I'm gonna listen to Beach Read and I will hopefully love it, but I will update you after I read it. Okay, bye. <laughs> Okay, cheers. I finished Beach Read and 
I'm not gonna lie. Um, I, I, I cried. I cried. Oh wait, I forgot my blanket. Where's my blanket? Gotta be orange or story. The three is gonna be like, I set you up for success. Okay, here's my orange. <laughs> Okay, but like as a seven, I don't know if January, like the main character really, or one of the two main characters, I don't know if she is a seven, but she has a lot of seven vibes, at least enough for me to like feel seen. One of the other characters says to her, they're joking about her being a fairy princess. And she's like, I'm not a fairy princess. Like, I, you know, I'm not fragile. Nothing in my life is perfect. And the other character is like, that's not what I mean. I mean that you're a fairy princess because you're like a, a light. Like everything that you touch, not that you are, you know, brushing things under the rug, but you are always optimistic. You're always like bringing lightness to a situation, even if you're like really going through it, which is a double-edged sword for sevens like me. Like I hate conflict. <laughs> I hate like dealing with tough stuff and all of that because like I just want to have fun. I just want to be happy. I want other people to be happy. And so that scene in the book was like, oh, <laughs> this book said, for Noelle. As far as like a recommendation to a seven, I still think this was really spot on, whether it was romance or not, because even in the author's note, after the story ends, the author has a note that says, this book is actually about writer's block, just as much as it is about like the characters and what they're going through. And I loved that one, because I'm a writer, like that's my day job, but also what I do for fun. And two, because like being stuck creatively is, such a fear of sevens of me. I shouldn't speak for all sevens, but being a seven, like I don't wanna feel stuck. You know, I want to feel like I still have options. I still have momentum. I can still change my mind. I can do something different and having being like creatively blocked comes up a lot. So reading about these characters, one of which has a lot of like seven tendencies kind of navigate being blocked and dealing with things in her personal life that she can't run from, that she has to deal with while being creatively blocked, like it was good. I needed to read this. And I think that other sevens would also like this. There's moments of this book that made me feel called out, I guess, let me put it that way. So I do think this particular romance was a good wreck for sevens, but I will say it just one more time. <laughs> just because your seven friend likes to have fun and is happy and likes a happy ending doesn't mean that we should be recommending them exclusively romances. I, I will stop beating that dead horse, but I, you get the point. I liked the plot. I liked the characters. I liked the backstories. Like it was all great. There was just, I don't know. I can't put my finger on it, but I have four stars is obviously not a bad rating. I definitely cried at the end. Um, I don't know. It was a great time. I loved it. Solid wreck. But this was so much fun. I had a blast. I absolutely can't wait to see what everyone else read and how it worked for them and like their types and all of those things. And huge thank you to Story for inviting me to participate in this series on her channel. I feel so honored to represent the sevens in this video, in this series. This just felt like a natural fit for me. <laughs> I don't know how to end this clip because it's not my own video, but I will say thank you to Story. Can't wait to watch the rest of these. And uh, I love you very much, even though you're not on my channel. But you know, the vibes are there. The seven energy is there. Okay, later. <laughs>